Good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Big Akar Ahmed, and welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to be going ahead and talking about some of the control that's happening in the entertainment industry. In specific, we're going to be talking about DJ Khaled today, as he is going to be our main example here. I've noticed that about a year ago when Israel and Palestine had gone ahead and got into the issue that they're having today, and the Palestinian people are being persecuted and destroyed by the thousands, tens and tens of thousands, that there are specific people in the media that refuse to speak, and then there are specific people in the media that go all out barbaric when they speak. And I find this very, very interesting because we can use these people as examples to see what happens to them. Do their bosses, do the people above them that hire them for these movies, that hire them um, and sign them to these labels and push out their albums and distribute them, do these people agree that, you know, an artist who's able to express their self, for instance, is allowed to have a public opinion or a social opinion or is allowed to have any opinion at all? Or are they supposed to just follow the political and social norms of their higher ups, right? So I noticed this prominently in DJ Khaled. As DJ Khaled is a Palestinian man and he has this uh, struggle story and all this garbage, I believe he grew up in New Orleans and met the likes of like Little Wayne and people like this early on in his career and then moved out to Florida, lived in Miami and places of this nature and still resides in Florida today. DJ Khaled is an award-winning DJ if you don't know who he is. He's at the top of the music industry, especially when it comes to hip-hop and rap, and works with the likes of people like Drake, Jay-Z, Beyonce, and many, many more. Now, my issue I'm having here with DJ Khaled is he hasn't said a word about what's happening to his Palestinian brothers and sisters. He hasn't said a word about his homeland over the last 9, 10 months, almost a year now. He's been hush. He's been quiet. And when we go ahead and look at his Instagram, he's disabled comments because people are calling him out for being hushed, for being quiet. When you are this big and you have such a big voice and influence, you should be able to use it. And I find it interesting that when we look at other influence influences, artists and actors and you know just social media influencers in general, that you see a big promotion of, you know, free Palestine and stand with Israel all over the place. But when it comes to someone who's Palestinian, who is a very big, one of the biggest names in the music industry, coming out and saying anything, he won't do it. He's scared, right? And this is just because he's going to get fired from whatever role he has in a movie or his next album is not going to be released or pushed out. And this is what I personally believe. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just take a look at his Instagram. Let's see what he's going ahead and posting here and see if it holds any weight. So recently he was in the movie Bad Boys. And um, yeah, he's posting about it saying, you know, yay, it's good to work with Will Smith, the person that slaps people on stage and has no respect and has... You know, you know, disrespectful, crazy wife, and yay! I'm in a satanic industry. Look at me, look at me. I'm so happy. And then look at the comments. It literally says you're so quiet on your Muslim brothers and sisters being massacred, bro. You can't serve God and the devil at the same time. Let's be real. Garbage can. And you got all these fires. Movie was hilarious, celebrated, good job on the movie, you know, and so forth. Well, what does he say? Does he say something about God? It's my second being a bad boy's dreams come true, work hard, is grateful, love for being a bad boy's for, take time coaching me on set, grateful for all and more love. So I think he's just saying like you can't thank God, you know, you can't be grateful and then work with the devil at the same time. That's what one of these comments said. And yet, I, I really don't believe that he said anything because he was working on the movie Bad Boys, the new Bad Boys movie that came out with uh, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. And he, if he says something, he might just get he, clips from the movie or there might be something in his contract where they won't pay him you know, for the movie or they won't pay him the full amount for the movie. 
and so forth. And then, as you can see here, how do you think beautiful words over here? You know, posting this video, you know, he's so happy, singing, dancing. Look at him, yeah, yeah, he's such a character with Jay Z. Look at all the food on the table, the 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 Last Supper mocking Jesus. And you see how much have you donated to Palestine? Hello, Mr. Kelly. Do you have showing things? Your money's cars, houses. It'd be nice for you to stand for your Palestinians coming up from there. All eyes on Rafa. Understand or talentless. Your album will tank because you're in silence. Stupidest move of your career. Just watch. Um, studying people are dying. You saying you should be saying uh, Shaitan did because his motto is God did. So he's saying that you should be saying Shaitan did because you worship Shaitan. You follow Satan. Here's another pose, just for example. It says I have two Drake songs on my new album coming 2024, and it's him and Drake. You know the bunch of pictures, and as you can see once again in the comments. These are millions of followers aren't going to get you anywhere on the Day of Judgment. Forget where you come from. Support Palestine, bro. Sold his soul for five minutes of fame. He forgot where he came from. Only money talks in this world, bro. Two Drake songs, but you are missing two balls to make any make any sense. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. If people notice this thing, people are also frustrated. And it's not DJ Khaled's job to necessarily come out and be the spokesperson for Palestinians, but he's Palestinian, and in a time like this where there's not very many Palestinian people or just Arabic people in general in the entertainment industry that have a voice as loud as DJ Khaled, and he's standing with all these other artists, he's standing with Drake, who is actually Jewish, who is one of the biggest artists in the world, for him not to voice his opinion and say something and not put his, you know, not put his equal weight of things on his talents and on who he is and not understand his value in the music industry as it is and i don't advocate for music i think music is completely haram it's completely satanic and it's a way to you know go ahead and brainwash people and take them away from god almighty so the music industry in general is satanic but you have a voice so why are you not using it because you're scared that your peers are going to drop you you're scared that your bosses are going to drop you you're scared that you're not going to get the role in that movie that you just recorded and this is why you won't speak. This is exactly why you won't speak. And it's very sad because you choose all of this, all of this worldly gain over the afterlife. You choose all this worldly gain out of, you know, exposing something from the inside out. Like, you know what's happening. And you work inside of a huge industry, a large industry. You hear the wickedness. You know the wickedness. You can expose a lot of it, but you choose not to. You run your mouth so much, bro. If anyone knows who DJ Khaled actually is, and I've ever seen him on like social media and talking and recording, you know, Snapchats and clips and TikToks, the guy doesn't shut up, dude. He talks so much, so fast, and it's really sad to see someone who's they babble their mouth all day on unimportant stuff, and then when it comes to important topics like this, where you come from, it's your people who are oppressed. You don't say a word. And I find it sickening, right? I'm going to go ahead and give you guys another example in the music industry here. And this gentleman's name is Belly, right? And he's also a rapper. This rapper is, I just believe he signed to The Weeknd. If you know who The Weeknd is, I think his label is XO, um, if I'm not mistaken. And <clears throat> he is Palestinian as well. While Belly's approach... It's completely different than DJ Khaled's, but as you see, Belly doesn't even have a million followers on Instagram, where DJ Khaled has almost 40 million followers on Instagram. Now, Belly's approach was to create a whole entire album about what's happening in Palestine and to talk about his oppression on his people and what is happening and go on the news and speak about this and make music videos and do things to go ahead and promote and post other artists like Kalani, who's using her voice um, for for these things. And I find it just very interesting that someone like Belly, who's working side by side in the likes of like Jay-Z and Diddy and like the highest up sickos, 
in the whole entire industry has the balls to go ahead and make a whole entire album, promote it, and push it about what is happening right now. And then you have people like DJ Khaled that aren't saying a damn word. And they have 40 million followers. And like I said before, this is a satanic industry. I don't really expect these people to be the influence or to be the, you know, to be the uh, the leaders of our communities. I think these people are idiots when it comes down to, to when it, at the end of the day. They rap about drugs and sex and all of these different things. These aren't people who, you know, you want your kids looking up to and trying to be like or trying to strive to be like. But when you have a voice that reaches 40 million people, bro, more than 40 million people, you're making you're making music with the highest up influences on the planet. You're talking about, you know, the biggest pop stars, the biggest rappers, and you're in the biggest movie with Will Smith and Martin Lawrence, and you can't say one thing that's wild. You got a leash around your neck, and they're walking you all the way down the street, DJ Khaled, and it's truly sad to see this. Um, just to go ahead and show you guys uh, one of the, you know, verses here. In Belly's album, in Belly's song, I believe the song is called Metal Birds. And once again, I'm not advocating to listen to music. I'm not advocating that music is good. I'm not advocating that it's halal. I'm advocating that it's actually haram. It takes you away from God Almighty. I don't suggest it. And especially rap music that talks about drugs and sex and all of these different things and killing people. This is something that is very, very sickening, right? The bass, the the boom, the beat makes you shake your body. It makes you dance sexually, and it, it it leads to fornication. It leads to things that just are not good. There's a reason that when we recite the Quran, it's a, it's like a melody. It's melodic, right? It touches your heart, touches your soul. It sounds soothing. The rhythm, the vibrations that come out of the way you pronounce specific words. This is something that is so important. Frequencies and vibrations affect our body. They affect our mind. They affect our soul. They affect everything around us. And they understand this with music. The way that they put things in music is incredibly sickening. It is to brainwash us. It is to mind control us. It is to lead our children and lead even adults to doing sick things, to doing things in specific that we wouldn't just normally think up or normally do. It's a way to brainwash people. And it's a way to get to people's hearts and souls as well and to tarnish them and to break them down. So remember that when you're listening to music. I don't care who it is, especially if it's mainstream music that's being promoted by a label and pushed out on the radio and pushed out on, on the front pages of YouTube and trending. It's demonic. It is completely demonic. And I started doing this documentary on music to go ahead and expose the music industry. And I got so deep into this. And I have so much information. I need to make this like Netflix series good. Because this is something that everyone needs to see. This is something that everyone needs to be exposed to and really understand. This video that I'm going to make about the music industry, I don't care if it takes me four years at this point. As long as... It gets the message across and it's undeniably in your face, then I will be completely happy with that. And that's what I'm seeking to do. I don't want to make like a 30 minute or an hour video of some, you know, cheap documentary about the music industry to get my point across some people and have like eight people argue in a comment section. I want this to be what it needs to be. I want to interview people. I want to dive completely into this music industry because it is so satanic. It is so gross. And the way they put things in our face, it's insane. I've been haunted. I've been attacked by the black magic and the things that have been happening in the music industry. Just studying and going frame by frame in music videos and exposing certain things in, in demons, jinns, and all of these things. It is completely, completely ill. It is completely scary. And the more you dive into this stuff, the more sick you become, the more you never want to hear a song again or see a music video or hear music again. And it's actually crazy. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just read the lyrics of this song called Metal Birds by the rapper Belly. 
Imagine waking up to metal birds blocking the sunlight. Everybody trapped now, black clouds, made it become night. In the holy land, how you got us living the slum life. My God, look what it's become like. Mothers in Palestine, or Palestine, got to carry their sons twice. Gun fight. So, this is actually sickening. He's saying that there's metal birds flying through the sky, which are airplanes. And there's people trapped. And the black clouds that are forming from the bombs that are coming from these metal birds are making the daylight become nighttime. And they're in the Holy Land. They're in the land of all the prophets. But they're living the slum life. And, you know, it's this is what it's become like. The mothers that are in Palestine have to carry their sons twice. Once they have to carry their sons in, you know, when they birth them as babies, they have to nurture them and carry them. And then they have to carry them as well after they're blown up or killed. And they have to carry them and bury them. And this is a very strong message. This is very, very, very amazing poetry right here. Should have never trusted y'all at the sleepover. The overseers build walls we can't see over. Freedom is a luxury afforded by freeloaders that put us in shallow graves and sheep in a deep coma. But thieves cannot be owners. The aroma of deceit got a cheap odor. And y'all sending fast food and free sodas. While they trying to kill us all, they don't need quotas. Take away our dreams while they still sleep on us. So... It's very self-explanatory, as you guys can see the lyrics right here. And this is what an artist should do, right? Like, an artist should go ahead and express their self and express their identity and express what's happening to their people and their homeland and their self within their own families, within their own life. That's what the point of art is. It's to paint an image. It's to go ahead and talk about something, especially in hip-hop, right? Hip-hop is all about, you know come from a struggle life and talking about the struggle of a specific group of people it started with the black community right talking about what happened in the black communities and everything that happens from you know selling drugs and doing all these things it's not even made to glorify it it's made to talk about what happens to them from the inside so the world can hear it right to go ahead and expose that life and say you know we don't want to be a part of gangs we don't want to sell drugs we don't want to do these things but this is all that's around us right and I didn't grow up with, with, with a father. I grew up with a single mother, and I joined a gang, and this is what happened, right? And I had to sell drugs to go ahead and keep our house. These are the things that rap has started upon, and it started talking upon to go ahead and expose. Rap is a form of, like, true poetry, right? To expose the deepest and darkest things that happen to people to go ahead and release that emotional energy off into an art form. And rap has just become about just like brainwashing people and money and sex and drugs and all of these different things. And I find it completely disgusting. I find it completely sad. And music is completely haram. I completely advocate against all of it, to be completely honest with you. But when you go ahead and you look at the scheme of things, there's levels to it. There's artists who go ahead and try and use the art form to spread a positive message, to spread something good. Yes, are many of them controlled that are within the industry? 100%. They're not allowed to say what they want. They're not allowed to do what they want. And it's so, so sad what the world has come to that you're not allowed to have a viewpoint in a country where freedom of speech is liable. Freedom of speech does not exist because the second you say something that's against what they want, you're not getting paid, you're not getting a house, you're not getting a car, you're not getting anything. They're taking your YouTube down, they're not giving you another album, they're not putting you in the next movie, they're not doing nothing for you. You're going to go back and you're going to work at Publix or Walmart as a, as, as a bag boy. That's where you're going to end up and it's very, very sad that that's the point that we've gotten to and I just wanted to show you guys a couple examples of Palestinian artists that are in the industry that went ahead and either said something about it or didn't say something about it. And you can go look at the, the numbers of Belly and see how shadow banned his album is and how it's not being promoted, how it's not being pushed. And then you can go see how pushed DJ Khaled's garbage is when he just screams over top of a mic and he brings people on. And it's very, very sad to see the likes of DJ Khaled, one of the biggest and probably the biggest Palestinian artist in the whole entire world, not say a word. It's such a shame. And 
I, I really just hope he wakes up. I know that everyone has a chance. And when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to God Almighty, every human being has a chance. God is all merciful. God is all knowing. And God is all loving. So when you turn to God Almighty, God Almighty will help you. If your heart is there, if your heart is pure, if you have a good intent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty will guide you. God Almighty will help you. There's no human being. I don't care how rich. I don't care how powerful. I don't care how many countries he owns and how many bombs he acquires. There is no one stronger than God Almighty. There's no one who knows better than God Almighty. And I would rather be set for eternity in the afterlife than be set for 10, 20 years in this physical life that's going to suck anyways. Most people go through life thinking, if I get this, I'm going to be good. And then they get it and then their life still sucks. And when I say sucks, you should be blessed for everything that happens to you. When I say sucks, I mean you're going to struggle regardless. I don't care if you're rich. I don't care if you're poor. I don't care who you are. You're going to struggle. Life is full of struggles. It's a test. Depending on who you are, you're getting a different test. God Almighty is not going to make it just easy on you, right? God Almighty makes it easy on you when you submit to him. He will guide you through everything in life and make it easy on you. But if you don't have that, life's going to suck anyways. So what's the point in chasing your, your money-hungry friends, your money-hungry bosses, and selling your soul to these people, selling your soul to shaitan, to the devil, and not connecting with God, not standing up for something, not being or identifying with anything. All you're doing is killing yourself from in the physical world and in the afterlife. Your your life is not going to turn out very, very well doing what you're doing. And it's going to backfire on you, DJ Khaled. And this is just a message and a warning shot to you. And I find it very, very dissatisfying and sad. And we're just going to go ahead and end it here. Thank you guys so much for coming in today. God bless every single one of you. And if you guys have anything to go ahead and say, leave it down below in the comment section. Do you think DJ Khaled is a sellout? Or do you think DJ Khaled is just smart for not saying anything? I think he's personally a sellout. And it's sad to see what is actually happening today. And hopefully we can go ahead and get into more of these things in the next video or so forth about how people get canceled or how people get removed from platforms for saying specific things or having specific opinions. And then you'll see exactly why DJ Khaled is not speaking. Thank you guys so much for coming today. God bless every single one of you. And until next time, free Palestine.